Hello, I'm Daniel Schofield from the Voice of the Republic podcast, and I'm here at DEFCON 2 with special guest Andrew Lawson, Hello. who's known to Star Wars fans for being the stunt double for Qui-Gon Jinn, and also played the, uh, the guard in <laughs> episode one, and I think I've got something wrong here. <laughs> yes, apparently I'm told the official title is I am the stand-in st- stunt double for Qui-Gon, because the actual stunt double is a chap called Rob Inch. And because there were a mixture of people used in the different capacities, there were technically like three people assigned to each role apart from the principal. And they each had correct titles. And because of various things that have been printed in books and lists and cast things like IMDb, people get confused. So I'm technically yeah. the key on standing stunt double and the Naboo soldier. Very good ah, so, so there you go. <laughs> My first question for you is how did you get the role in Star Wars? Um, I very cheaply wrote them a letter saying um, as you were doing the earlier story of the films I thought they needed a big tall actor to play the young Darth Vader because the word on the great was that he was going to be in the film. And I got a very nice letter sent back from the he- uh, one of the heads of the film saying um, well, actually, he's going to be a little boy, but we'd be interested in seeing you because I know they like the way I look, so they like some of the stuff I've done. So I went along for an audition, which initially was to play um, an alien of some description, uh, which they, they offered me, and I said no, um, mainly because I didn't fancy being in the aesthetics, but as a decision which I kind of later regretted but that's another story so they then said that they had this um, they had this, this this force of soldiers that they are looking at um, doing excuse me, I've dropped the <laughs> their own on my trousers um, because Jedi's do that it's, it's a very busy job and you need to keep your energy up and the force I mean, goes a certain way and sometimes you need the odd bit of chocolate when you're on earth in the earth's atmosphere however um, they said they'd got this force of like soldiers and I thought I thought, oh that could be a lot more fun. So they then sent me along to a fight audition with Nick Gillard. And the funny thing was was that Nick Gillard and I had worked together on Robin the Prince of Thieves. Nick at the time was a stunt guy. And it was literally one of those things and done the fight audition just oh, I know you, I recognise you from somewhere and we yeah. talked about what we've done. And lo and behold we we realised that we'd worked in the same job together. Didn't really see that much of him on Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, but I did know him around because you get to know certain people from being around. Um, and um, that was that was pretty much it, really. They they turned around off with the thing, and a couple of weeks later, I was up at Leavesden filming. Yeah, interesting. And my second question for you is, how did you get into acting? How did I get into acting? Um, basically. I was at school and I was studying and I was getting very frustrated at school because I was sort of getting to that point where I needed to choose subjects and decide what I wanted to do and kind of didn't really know what I wanted to do but knew I had to do something because parents were you know, pressurising you and teachers were pressurising you. Um, and I'd had, uh, I'd had a bit of an odd experience with, um, with, with sort of the military world. There's a very strong military tradition in my family and it was kind of um, believed that I would follow in that tradition and I, I joined the Sea Cadet Corps and I spent a year or two in the Naval Reserve and um, I think they had designs on me going to Sandhurst or something um, and I just checked it all in because I, I kind of realised it wasn't really me I didn't think I could pick up a gun and point it at somebody with confidence and pull the trigger. And also, it was that sense of like doing what somebody else wanted you to do rather than doing what you wanted to do. Um, and so I got rid of that, and so I very quickly had to sort of find something to sort of fill it and appease the people that I annoyed by my parents. And, uh, and I was doing drama at school. Um, so, which I did quite like and was interested in, but didn't think of it as a career initially. Um, but I talked over what had happened with my head of department, and he said, he said, he said, actually, you're very good at this. He said, I think you should 
I think she had a crack at drama school. Um, so I got some pieces together and auditioned for drama school and I got into three of the leading sites of it. And I chose to go to one. I uh, spent three years training, passed the course, um, and um, went out and, and, and just started auditioning and interviewing for work and getting jobs and it sort of went from there. You know. Still doing it after 26 years? And that's up 25 years, definitely. Yeah, about 26 years in the minute now. Which is odd, because I don't feel sort of old. I feel experienced, but I don't feel old. And that's a long time to be doing a job, <laughs> and it's like, you know, people think, oh, God. You know. And they initially thought it was going to be like some mad hobby that, like, oh, we'll probably get for a couple of years and then end up being a manager and accountant or something. But no, I've, I've, I've stuck with it and made a living from it and worked on this wonderful thing and still are. Um, so yeah, I think I think it was something that was kind of meant to happen through default, really. Yeah. And my yeah. final question for you is, how did you enjoy that content? Uh, it's been really good. It's been really good. It's been it's been a bit sort of peculiar because I think people are are very sort of curious at the fact that there's in like there's like three sites this year. Yeah. When I came before, there was only one. Um, so I think that they 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 they're, they're finding it a bit overwhelming to take in more different stuff. Not that it's good, not good, because it is good. Um, and it's really good to meet fans. Uh, had some very weird conversations as always. Um, but yeah, you never quite know what to expect on these things. They're always they're always interesting. They're always different, and they're always good in their own way. Yeah. Um, there's a lot more. Um, there's a lot more conversation with people at this one than there is at some of the others. Sometimes it's a bit sort of distant. Like big events, you kind of yeah. get a bit lost. People don't. They come up. They see you. They 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 choose the photograph and buy your signature or sign your memorabilia or what have you and you know brief you and off they've gone and it's a bit like that whereas this is much more sort of laid back and interesting you know so yeah it's 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 and it's still going so yeah. so so probably in two hours time if we came back and did this again I'd probably have something even more to say <laughs> <laughs> well thank you for the that's all right pleasure thank you